The truth is, he has no idea what he's doing. First, it was the overcooked stir fry. Then, he ruined the roast beef. And the last straw was a grilling experiment. You see, George took a cooking class once, where they taught him the basics. And now he believes he's the next Anthony Bourdain. But as his roommate, I know the truth. And I've had enough of his fine dining dinners. What even is this? I'm also tired of buying groceries that may not be used or end up expired. So I've had an idea. What if I could build an app to help George, to help us, keep track of our ingredients and recommend new recipes with AI? Okay, so let's list out our requirements for this build. In order to keep track of our ingredients so they don't go bad, we're gonna need an inventory. Then we also want our app to be able to provide recipe recommendations using ChatGPT. It would also be nice to have push notifications for recommendations during the day and tracking our ingredient expiration dates. Fourth, I'd also want to build it out once and use it for both iOS, Android, and the web since George has an Android. And lastly, I want to have an entry form that can allow George and I to make tweaks when asking ChatGPT for recipes. So in order to have a list of grocery items we can update and a scalable inventory, let's use Flutterflow's native Firebase integration and content manager. To easily set up ChatGPT's integration, we can utilize Flutterflow's API manager to test our APIs and get recommended JSON pass. Next, we'll use Flutterflow's no-code push notification setup. Finally, we're covered on launching to all platforms here since Flutterflow uses the Flutter framework. And last but not least, I'll need a form. It would be nice to not reinvent the wheel here and utilize a few UI template components to work from. Most importantly here, I still want to be able to add in custom code and not get locked into a platform. So it'll require building with a platform a bit different. Now let's walk through a high level overview of how we set this up in Flutterflow. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. We're gonna build this app in two parts. First, starting with the ChatGPT integration and the form, and later in the video, we'll jump into the inventory and push notification setup. First, I'm gonna start with the free Flutterflow ChatGPT template here that you can find on the marketplace, linked below. It gives us a base form that we can use to call the ChatGPT API. I wanna create a form that will allow me and George the ability to add specifications around the type of recipe we're looking for. So, I've changed the form's entry fields to type of meal, cooking time, and level of difficulty. Here's what it looks like now that I've adapted it to our use case. Next, I'll use our AI theme gen feature to get a color system representing a chef's kitchen. So we can change out our template and have colors to use later on in the app development process. This is helpful since I'm not a designer and I wanna to get to setting up my functionality quickly. Okay, now I need a page that can actually represent the recipe generated by ChatGPT based on our form inputs. I'm not exactly sure what that page will look like since I'm not a designer, so I'll give our AI page gen feature a shot with my UI requirements. And it looks like it gave me a pretty good starting point so I can keep building out my application. Now, I decided to tag in a designer here to make this a bit better while I continue executing on the functionality of the app on a separate page. We both continue to work live on the application together. And the result here was wonderful. Thanks, Will. This looks like a design that George could follow. Meanwhile, I started to test our API call. We use the 3.5 Turbo 0613 model since we can describe it a function and have it pass back JSON. I use Flutterflow's API manager to easily pass in a sample prompt, my API keys, and our function that passes in our form information. We're going to use these output recommended JSON paths from Flutterflow to set up our UI later on. Next, I also created a custom function to convert our entry form's written prompt, which is a string variable, into JSON, so we can send structured data to ChatGPT's API, a win for low code. Now that our API is set up, let's jump into our visual action editor and set up the execution of the API call when the user presses the generate recipe button. First, we'll create an action to combine all the user entered text from our form and send it to our custom function to be turned into JSON. Next, I'll take this JSON output and create an action to call the ChatGPT API. I wanna test this first, so I've set up a simple visual condition to show a confirmation or failed snack bar. I'm gonna utilize Flutterflow's test mode here which allows me to quickly reload my app if there's any changes I need to make. But it looks like it's working, so we can move on. Okay, now that we have tested, I altered the success side of the conditional tree to pass ChatGPT's response into our next page, our beautiful recipe page from earlier. 
We're going to use this JSON path, return from the ChatGPT API, and pass it to our next page. Now since the response from ChatGPT is actually a string, I duplicated the custom function we wrote earlier, remove the ChatGPT specific messages, to turn the string into JSON so we can parse it for the details that we need. Another win for low code. Okay, now let's integrate the convert API string to JSON custom function into our action editor. And now I'll be able to access ChatGPT's response as JSON. Heading over to our recipe page, let's pass ChatGPT's response as a parameter into this page. Next, we can set up our UI to display JSON data from ChatGPT. For now, let's do name, recipe time, and recipe price. Okay, let's run this in test mode, and let's say George has potatoes, steak, and tomatoes on hand, a bed of ranch, he's looking for lunch, only has 60 minutes to prep, and he's honest with himself about his cooking level. Sweet, it looks like it's working, so let's do the same for ingredients and recipe. Now, I was able to ask for help from one of our genius developers, thanks Shovik, who provided a code expression to export out the recipe instructions from the JSON response. So now, I'm going to simply copy that same code expression variable to hook up our ingredients list. This makes it super easy and super fast to develop applications. And now, let's do a final test of this feature. So, if I gave George blueberries, strawberries, waffle batter, a few condiments, asked for breakfast, gave him 60 minutes, and set his cooking level to beginner, I might be having blueberry and strawberry waffles one day. So it looks like our first feature is done. Okay, now let's dive into our second feature, the inventory list. And we'll also cover push notifications. First, let's start off by adding in our inventory page. Since I'm just trying to get some base functionality set up and I can bring in a designer later, we can utilize Flutterflow's list template. I'm adapting it to be grocery inventory. Now, I want each item in this list to showcase the item's quantity and price for now, but we can continue to adapt this later on as our requirements grow. I'm also going to add in a floating action button that we can use to open a component drawer to add items in our inventory, and I'm gonna add in an icon button that can take us to our generate recipes flow that we set up in part one. Okay, so we'll also need some authorization pages. And since authorization is present in every app and would take up more time to build from scratch, let's add in a template login page. I then can tweak this design to our use case, and I'm going to duplicate it to create a signup page with a few more requirements. Then this is where I began to set up authorization by creating a user's collections in Firebase, which Flutterflow made a little bit easier, and setting up my authorization in the Firebase console. Now let's add in one more UI component, the bottom drawer. I want a bottom drawer to pop up with entry fields for name of item, quantity, and price so that we can populate our inventory. Once again, I didn't want to do this from scratch, so I gave AI Component Gen a try. Let's see what it does. Okay, although it's not perfect, it does give me a good starting point. So now we can just make our adjustments. Lastly, in terms of pure UI work, let's set an action on our floating action button so that when the user presses our widget, our bottom drawer is revealed. We can even toggle on a drag functionality for this bottom sheet and Flutterflow's display of this bottom drawer includes a smooth blurring of the original page. Great, so we have the UI working. Let's make a quick adjustment here to the component. I want this to be a button that George or any user can use to select the date and time that they purchase the item. And I always want George to be able to take a photo of the item as well. Now, in order to create the functionality to add an inventory item, I'm gonna set up our Firebase collection. We'll create a grocery item collection and give this collection fields like name, quantity, price, photo, date purchased, and a user link that maps back to our individual users. Next, I also added a field for grocery items in our users collection so we can visualize each user's list in our UI independently. Now, since I want the user to be able to add to our grocery items inventory, I can create an action on the save button in our bottom drawer and I can visually assign which user inputs from our UI will be fed into the fields we created in Firebase. For example, I'll allow the user to upload a photo, and when the user hits save, the uploaded photo will be saved in Firebase. I finish this flow for all of our fields, including linking each item to a user. Then, I created one more backend call, which added this item to the list of grocery items associated with our user. Lastly, I made some UI adjustments so our user can instantly visualize the photo that has been uploaded and the date that has been selected. 
Now let's hook up our UI to be able to showcase our user's inventory in Firebase. I use Flutterflow's list view widget to query our grocery items collection for only the items associated with our authenticated user. This will dynamically generate the items in our inventory. Now, I will hook up each individual UI text field to the data fields associated in my grocery items collection. Also added the ability to delete items here with an icon and action flow, and I added the ability to log out. Okay, great, let's jump into test mode. Once again, we're just walking through base functionality here, not design. So when I select the floating action button, our drawer pops up, our user, George or I, can enter in the specifications for items that we have on hand. We can add a photo that visualizes in our app, and we can select the date that we purchased it as well. And finally, when we click save, our item is visualized in our inventory. I'm also gonna show you what's happening in the back end here. So as you can see, I've now created a grocery item document in Firebase with all the fields that we had set up in Flutterflow. And finally, let's set up push notifications to make sure we never forget our older ingredients. Flutterflow uses Firebase cloud messaging for push notifications here. And you will also need an Apple developer account in order to be able to set this up for your iOS deployment. So first off, I set up my push notifications in my Apple developer account and also in my Firebase cloud messenger settings. Next, I turn on push notifications in Flutterflow and deploy the rules. Now I can manually send push notifications from Flutterflow directly from this view with options to fill in the notifications title, text, deliver with sound, when to schedule it, and select specific users to send the notification to. However, I actually want to allow George and I to schedule our own notifications on grocery items that may be going bad in a few days. So I went back to our UI and changed it up to include a small bell icon for us to press to set up notifications. Now, I want to add an action to this bell icon to trigger a push notification for the selected grocery item two days before the expiration date. So this is a new feature that we're adding later on in our product development process. But let's see how we can adapt our app fairly quickly and powerfully. So first, I created a push notifications action on the bell icon. I set up the recipient to be our authenticated user. I created my own notification title and text, but I can always set this from a variable as well. Finally, I want to schedule this push notification two days before an item's expiration date. So I will need to add a few things to our app. First, I added in a field for expiration date into our Firebase schema right from Flutterflow. Then I'll also quickly add in another user entry field to our bottom sheet for our inventory. This will allow a user to select the expiration date. And this was easy to do since I copied and pasted from an earlier widget that we created. And finally, I created a custom function using our AI code Copilot in order to return a date time variable two days before our user's selected expiration date. This way, we're going to be able to give George a reminder that the avocados are about to go bad in two days and also store this information in our Firebase schema. Okay, great. Our base build is now finished. We can go ahead and test in Flutterflow. And although we haven't spent too much time on design, we can now quickly test our functionality and we can always bring in our designers at a later point. Okay, so I've created an account for George here and let's say he begins to add those avocados we bought last week. He can add in the quantity of the avocados, the price, a photo, add in the date that it was purchased and the date that it was expired. Now I'm not utilizing all these fields in my app logic yet, but you can see how having this information will allow me to build even more complex features for us into this application. I'll go ahead and add a few more items for George. Okay, so now I can reference our inventory list and travel to the recipe page, fill it out, and get ChatGPT's recipe recommendation. The next step here would be to connect our inventory directly into our ChatGPT call. However, let's jump into deployment and push notifications so I can show you what's possible. With Flutterflow, I can now deploy to the web in a few clicks, and I can use my own custom domain or create a free Flutterflow domain. I can also manage my deployments to the App Store and Google Play Store in a few clicks, a process that I've started here. In order to test push notifications, we have to download our code and test it using an emulator. Thankfully, there is a no login to Flutterflow, so I can export to my laptop or GitHub. Okay, so I've downloaded my code and opened it in Android Studio, and set it up to test on Pixel 6, since that's what George has. You can see that I received a permissions notification regarding our push notification setup. So let's test a direct push notification from Flutterflow. 
Since you could be sending notifications to lots of users, there's a confirmation module provided by Flutterflow. And there you have it. Since we have set up this automation earlier, this is an example of what George would see on his phone when the avocados are going bad. And another example is if I want to send a direct recipe to George, given that I'm craving something specific and we have the items, I may be able to do that as well. Now obviously there's still more steps to this build and lots of improvements on design, but I'm going to go test this with George and see what works. Let me know what other features you think we should add and if you like this type of video. We'll see you in the next one.